Arthur. Gentlemen, you have an amendment? I do have an amendment, Madam Speaker. Amendment at the desk. Uh, uh, <laughs> probably should bring my glasses. 343120 slash one. Amendment number one. So be considered reading an amendment. So ordered. Thank you, Madam Speaker. What this amendment does, if, if you turn to, I believe it's like page 20 in the bill, it talks about the recipient of these funds receiving more money based on CPI, Consumer Price Index, which sounds a little strange to me. We had some uh, banter back and forth earlier with some numbers thrown out that the max that you'll pay into this is $21 a week. Well, with CPI reaching a all-time high, or at least the, you know, inflation being at a 40-year high, this just doesn't sound right, and I have no idea why this fund would need to be tied to the Consumer Price Index. So with that, this amendment strikes that language from the bill, and I'm hoping the floor leader would accept it as a friendly amendment. Thank you, Madam Speaker. <laughs> Committee um, Chair. <laughs> thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, Body, I would ask that you resist this amendment. Um, the reason it's tied to CPI is so that the maximum benefit doesn't lose value. And we know that $67,000 is all it takes to trigger the maximum benefit of $1,000 currently a week. We want to make sure that working people don't lose ground as everyday goods increase in cost. The working moms can afford to, date, to buy things like formula, bottles, car seats, diapers, and their costs are increasing. And to be clear, the contribution is not tied to CPI, merely the maximum benefit. As things get worse, we want people to be able to survive. Every two years, we will come back and, and visit the fund to make sure that it is viable. But again, I would ask that we resist this amendment because we want these individuals to continue to be able to afford the things as they increase in price. Maker of the amendment. Thank you, my, Madam Speaker. That, that, that was hilarious. So CPI is Excuse increasing. Me. <laughs> that was, the response was kind of funny. The CPI was, uh, is increasing. Inflation is increasing. So the, the, the payer receives more money but the people paying in won't receive an increase? How, how's that work exactly? Uh, I would ask you to listen with both ears because that's not at all what I said. What I said Sam was is that the payments don't increase. What's taken out of your paycheck does not increase per employee. However, again, the contributions do not increase. However, what is deducted from the fund, the maximum benefit can increase as it is tied to CPI. It's the only thing tied to CPI. So the money coming out increases, but the money going in doesn't increase? You remember that's what we said about that $1.4 billion and people are a little shocked because why is it so much if we don't need it all? That's exactly why. So how long are you plan on floating that for? $1.4 billion. You have more money coming out than going in. It will eventually run out of money. No, because as I have said repeatedly, every two years we will be coming back to revisit this issue via study to make sure we have a viable and surviving fund. I got so you. If, so, so things are getting worse. If this consumer price index continues to increase, that means things are going bad. That's not when you turn your back on your citizens. That's when you focus on helping them. All this does is allows them to be able to afford things as they become more expensive. It's not comical, it's factual. Well, th that was the answer I was looking for, ladies and gentlemen, right there. Every two years, we come back and reset this. The truth is, inflation's at a 40-year high. We're in the second term of the Carter administration. We don't know where this is going, and this body knows this because it wasn't a month ago that we just suspended the gas tax. CPI is also connected to the gas tax is going up in July. And here it is again. The difference between those two bills, I'll tell you though, 10 years ago, the CPI and the gas tax, well, that had a cap at 8%. I don't see where this bill is capped at all. It's not. The gentleman pressing his amendment. Yes, ma'am, I am pressing the amendment. But yeah, it's on the amendment. To, but this is important for on people to realize. On the amendment. I will hear you. On the amendment. All in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? No. Roll call. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, to explain my vote. 
Explain. Explain your vote. Two Thank minutes. You. Less Thank you, Madam than Speaker. Preferable. I'll try to listen. I, I think that, that what my friend from St. Mary's County said, we all should really, really take a second look at. I know sometimes we miss things. Everybody gets upset. We're heated. We're hungry. But what he just said is pretty darn important. What he just revealed is that the reason why we're taxing everybody now is to build up a $1.4 billion fund because we know that things are going to cost uh, more. Minority leader, you can't explain your vote if you're not voting. I'm thinking, I'm thinking about it, Madam Speaker. I'm thinking about it. Uh, thank you. And, and what he said is that we need to build up, we need to tax everybody, tax employers, tax employees, build up a $1.4 billion fund so we can start paying benefits out because the benefits with CPI are almost inevitably going to rise, and then we won't have enough money coming in on the front end, and then we'll come back every two years, and we'll continue to probably resubsidize the program or adjust it so we tax more to get more money. That's what's going to occur. This is a great idea. This is a great idea. It's a bipartisan idea. It's a good thing to help people who need help when they're at their worst moments. But this is a very poor way to do it, and this amendment would at least address that. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, to explain my vote. To explain your vote. Yes, Madam Speaker, thank you. And, and I share the same concerns as the minority leader. I just did the back of the napkin math, and if we're looking for a $1.4 billion fund, and we have 1.25 million employees, that does equal the $1,120 per year, which was given earlier, but if there's only people making over $147,000 paying that max, that means employers picking up the rest. But more importantly, if it's 5% that they're going to take advantage of this, that's 62,500 employees averaging $22,400 per year and $1,866 per week that we're going to be paying out into this fund. So if it's not tied to this CPI, this is going to go untapped and continue to rise. And my, my fear is everybody's going to start to take advantage of this just like they did to unemployment insurance. Thank Clerk you, will Madam take Speaker. the call. The amendment fails. Gentleman from Carolina. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I do have an